Better? All right. Um, I just want to say thank you for coming for everything he's done. He's been a great teacher and a great coach. Um, my project was a hydrogen fuel cool cell car. Yep. Before we start on that, a little about myself. Um, I am CSWA certified. I am not a nerd like half this class. Actually, I am complete. <laughs> I'm just lazy. Next year, I'll be attending the University of Wyoming to major in mechanical engineering with hopes to achieve a electrical minor. Um, yeah, not really much about me. For logo, since I gotta get rid of all these uh, stuff that supposedly is for a grade, that's a grade. Um, I chose green as a good photo. It's green, futuristic, feels innovative. Um, orange, it's vibrant, gives you a little bit of a pop in the face, you know. Um, all capital letters. I want you to see this logo and feel like I'm at least kind of know what I'm doing. You know, we'll see. Depends on how I feel like today. Um, simple text. It's approachable. You don't feel like I'm in your face and I can't what. Um, project description. I want to build a fleet. I want to take a polymer electrolyte fuel cell, hook it up to a car, and regenerate the car's batteries to be able to drive. Um, I want to build a working model car. Um, that you will see probably did not happen. I want to model that power and output for what a real car would look like. Um, personal goals. I want to be less lazy. You know, I tend to be kind of a lazy person sometimes. I'll take the shortcut. And Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, we'll see. Um, I want to procrastinate less. I have a bad habit of doing homework last minute as fast as seemingly possible. Um, tell people I did something cool. It's always cool when you can say like, hey, what? I did that, you know, it was fun. And uh, get real world experience in engineering. Most of what I've done has just been cobbling random things together and follow a format. Um, my advisor list. Um, my solo work advisor was uh, Aaron Helgerson. He uh, was a is a lighting engineer down in Denver. Um, he uses SolidWorks every day. Support advisor Kim Scott Bill Young was Young's uh, son. He helped me set up MATLAB and get started on my simulation work. My mom, who I occasionally threw my journals at and told her uh, fun grammar because grammar is overrated. And George, my emotional support monkey, who I've known since sixth grade. <laughs> Still makes the mistake of buying uh, MacBooks, but you know that's his own poor decision. Um, special shout out to Dr. Here, who Kim did set me up with, who created the simulation I am using. Um, Ms. Mack, who helped me with chemistry to make sure I didn't blow myself up. Um, Mr. Zoller, who helped me with a large part of the math section near the end for modeling. Um, Andy Del Rio, who was emotional support as well. Kay Barnes, and Avi, all of which were emotional support in the corner, and watched me work while they sat around and did nothing. I guess Avi did something. What would I know? <laughs> Um, my timeline. I was very ambitious at first. By the end of November, I wanted to have a usable uh, data for my math labs. I wanted to just knock that out and get it done. Didn't happen. Um, I wanted to have this build set up and be able to test my fuel cell. Also, didn't happen. Yeah. End of December, wanted real world numbers and fully operational fuel cell. Didn't happen. Um, by the end of January, I wanted to have a full electrical model and be CSWA so electrical certified. Uh, mid-year, this is what I thought of. So I thought I was kind of on time. I moved my research, all of my math labs, all the way to the end of the year. Extended my research to all the way to the end of the year, so I had time to fully achieve an operational fuel cell. By the end of the year, by the end of the year I wanted to have the same goals. Just take a lot more time for it. Um, by the end of the year, I'd say I'm four to six weeks behind. Give me another four weeks, I bet I can have a rolling model of my car. Um, I removed certifications from my timeline in order to make sure I had a proper representation of my car and data. <coughs> Major setbacks include I had a lot of issues with hydrogen storage. It's not like water, I'm used to storing liquid. Liquids are easy to store. Air is apparently is not. I like to sneak out on them. Um, I had too much back pressure when I'm operating both of the electrolysizer I used. It would either try to explode or it would just dump everything out everywhere. That was a lot of fun a couple times. Of course, I already said I didn't have enough hydrogen to properly run the cell, which was a major setback in getting everything working. Um, it's apparently really hard to find suitable low voltage components that aren't $1,000 a piece, because money is not limited, and I don't think anyone here has something like that. And printing errors. I printed really small parts on a 3D printer that's not designed to do that. Managed to do it <coughs> somehow. Don't know how. Don't have to. It worked. Um, research. Major research findings. I researched the operation of polymer electrolyte fuel cells, um, basic operation of solid oxide fuel cells, which use a ceramic membrane. 
non-isolated DC, con DC converter operation, switching and linear, um, supercapacitors, and hydrogen car basic construction, along with how to produce the hydrogen vacuum for this project. Um, your fuel cell construction is actually pretty basic if you avoid the material science. I will help, I will get the basics out for you guys because I don't know, I'm not even sure I understand some of the material science. Um, your basic fuel cell is made of an anode, cathode, and gas diffusion layer. This is called your MEM, <coughs> your uh, membrane electrode assembly. You take one of these, you have your anode and cathode are made of platinum. Your membrane is made of natrium. The hydrogen ions flow across this membrane, creating electricity and bonding with high oxygen to create water. Um, this membrane can be as thin as 20 microns thick, thin, which is insanely thin considering computer resistors are 7 microns and they're one of the smallest things in the world. You get approximately a 60% efficiency out of these um, fuel cells, which is crazy given your uh, gasoline engine car runs about 30% efficient, so you lose 60% of your uh, power when running a gasoline car. Each MEA makes about 0.8 to 1 volt. So you'll stack hundreds of these together with bipolar plates in between for cooling and hydrogen transfer to get anywhere from 1 to 200 kilowatts of power. Solid oxide fuel cells run on a similar principle of ionic transfer, except they use a yttrium-based ceramic for your ion, ionic transfer. This allows for the clean use of petrol fuel You'll put your fuel in, they'll strip the hydrogen off of it, transfer across your membrane, and rebond with the um, oxygen to create water. This happens both ways in use. They can operate in excess of 1,000 degrees centigrade, and you will have um, the paid oxygen fuel out along with water. They are less beneficial to the environment. However, the amount of power they produce is immense. Basic ones can produce 100 kilowatts, the, the DE, DOE, Department of Energy says they can produce up to 2 megawatts in research, which is an obscene amount of power. These are used for stationary applications, like powering large city blocks. Or you can put them in something like a tractor trailer where you need a lot more power than a fuel cell can provide. Um, PCDC converters, I did research switching and linear. However, I came to the simple conclusion. You only need a step down converter. Off your voltage, you will usually exceed more voltage than what you need to run your motor. This means that you're switch, you only need a step down, it'll bring excess amperage into the system. The way you get this is you put your voltage in by your efficiency, divided what, by what voltage you want out, you get excess amperage to add to your system. This helps increase efficiency and you increase your operation. Um, your voltage in is a function of your duty cycle, since you have your uh, switching device, switching into your system to decrease your voltage. That's the basics of it. You can spend a lot more time and hours into these, and you would probably go the same. Um, Supercapacitors, another relatively simple thing that I could do a lot more detail on, but here's the basics of what you need. Supercapacitors have a high farad rating excess of 3,000 farads is what you can achieve. Farad is a measure of your capacitance in this capacitor. They are essentially two capacitors built into one, allowing for quick recharging and um, use of rapid use of power. The way they work is they have a double hemel flare, which is what you see here, which can be as, as thin as a few angstrom stick. This just means you have your ions lined up in a row, but not quite touching. As soon as these ions make contact, they run. Vehicle design, also relatively simple if you look at the basic overview. You have your fuel cell, brings power to your supercapacitors. This allows for a flatline use of your fuel cell. Flatline use of your fuel cell reduces wear and tear on it, and your supercapacitors keep that peak energy power. On um, your DC DC converter, as I've already talked about, keeps your voltage constant across the system. Make sure you don't fry it, especially the components. As technology and electronics has gotten more advanced, its requirements for what your voltage needs to be has gotten more and more specific. So this is very important. Hydrogen production is also another really relatively simple thing on the Electrolysis requires uh, electricity and water to work. You take your anode and your cathode, you submerge them in water, put a little bit of salt in there to increase your conductivity and run power through that. 
One side will produce hydrogen, one side will produce oxygen. If you have about double the hydrogen, you can get it out of the oxygen just because it's H2O. Oh. Um, there's zero other byproducts of this process. It's only water and hydrogen and oxygen. However, it does have a high energy usage, meaning across the system, you do have carbon usage if you don't have a completely clean energy system. Well, actual work, I suppose. I should figure I should do something. I can't just do research all day, I think. No, no. Um, did I power my fuel cell? Actually, yeah, I achieved 2.5 volts of power in the fuel cell. So roughly um, a couple of watts of that. Two watts of power, I think I ran out of money. Um, I didn't blow myself up this time. We'll see. Maybe I'll get bored and make some hydrogen bombs in the basement. My mom keeps getting nervous about that. But, you know, maybe I'll do it with that. So we'll see. Um, this fuel cell required 70 cc's a minute to reach full potential. That would be 3 volts, 3 watts. I did not achieve that. But I did learn a lot about how this fuel cell ran, what it did, and how it reacted, and what it took to get it there. You have to reach a certain pressure, you have to reach a certain flow rate to get it to actually even turn it on. Um, with my basic electrolyzer I bought at the beginning of the project, it was a two watt system and made 10 cc's a minute. Not a whole lot, right? Maybe 1.5 volts out of the uh, fuel cell. Not enough to do anything. I turn on a light sometimes, runs for about 30 seconds, shuts off. You can see it back on my poster. Maybe I'll turn on if you want to do it. Um, then I took a five gallon bucket, which I stole from my uh, former job at Jimmy John's, put two bolts in it, hooked a car out of it, and some road salt. <laughs> Seems smart, right? It worked. I made 60 cc's a minute. That's how I got my 2.5 volts. It took 75 watts of power to get to that point. That's a lot of power considering before it took two watts to get 10 cc's. There's way better ways to do this. This is what was available to me and what was cost efficient, not power efficient. Um, yeah, it was interesting. I didn't blow myself up though, like everyone kept telling me. But that was fun. Then came for the bomb. I realized at some point I have to be able to show you guys something. Up to this point, I had just been trying to make things work and get things operational, right? Worked on worked with MATLAB. From Montana State University, they made a uh, 500 watt cell model in MATLAB that I could already use. This was made in about 2003, but most of the information there still holds accurate. Um, Dr. Here, Dr. Shaw, and Kashin Wayne made it in 2003. Um, I did this because I needed a more larger controlled sample. Well, these it's, yeah, cells do scale all the way up because to add more power, you add more cells. It's still important to prove your concept larger and larger. Um, power in MATLABs, you, you control the fuel cell load by your power of amperage. So I created a cosine graph to show the cycle of the power. While you're driving down Arapaho, you're not constantly accelerating. Um, you are accelerating, and then you're going one speed for 10 seconds, and then you're stopping at a stoplight, because there's always a stoplight when you're in a hurry. You always hit the stoplight. So I created a cosine graph to show this. I determined that in this 500 watt model, 14 amps was the maximum my motor could handle. I took a theoretical motor off of Amazon and said that's the max it could handle. So I created that cosine function right there to model this. About every 500 seconds, it would reach its peak, and drop back down for power. That was the basic. It was 10,000 seconds long, this uh, simulation, which is reasonable, help me show temperature and all that stuff. Um, I transferred all this data to Logger Pro. I did this because I knew Logger Pro. It wasn't something that I've never seen before. I could have done it in MATLABs. In fact, it probably would have worked better in MATLAB. However, I didn't understand that, and I figured, well, I know Logger Pro. Just use logger, you know? So I created calculated columns of my torque and my motor power. I decided I was going to simulate a car that ran at 1800 RPM. This is because your car is goal is to maintain the same RPM as much as possible. You have a peak efficiency point. In this motor, you could have a transmission hooked up to it and be able to run 1800 RPM. So this also simplified my math. I didn't want to create a different RPM and simulate what that would have to look like to drive. 
This is because your power in by your efficiency over your angular speed of your motor is a function of your torque. So your angular speed, if you set that to 1800 RPMs, 2 pi over 60 gives you your angular speed. This gives me my torque curve, which you guys can see here. Peaks out about a little below 1.5 newton meters of force. Well, hitting um, 0.25 um, kilowatts of power. Your most, your most torque obviously comes from your most power. This would be the peak of your acceleration. I'll try it. Um, my bolt, once again, DC DC converter. I added some, I got some additional efficiency in this curve by adding you know, my DC DC converter. Pretty simple, provides a lot of added efficiency. This is important because you lose a large amount of power on your peak usage because that's how it works. It's set up like that. It, um, as you're, when you're down low, you have more amperage up as you've increased your voltage. You got more amperage at the base from your DC converter, and you lost that on top of you had an inverse relationship with your voltage. Um, so it was more efficient to add that as opposed to it would just be two even lines. That low end power was really nice for um, when you're going fast. As you notice, 500 watts doesn't make a lot of power. Someone would have a really pimpin' scooter for this motor. <laughs> like, really pimpin' scooter. You'd have a transmission, a hydrogen fuel cell, and you'd be making about a quarter of a horsepower. Yeah. America, speed, you know, would be great. Um, conclusion, to make this work, you need a 100 plus kilowatt cell to run your car. Um, Supercapacitors will allow you to flatten your power curve and be able to run your fuel cell very efficiently and put a lot less stress on it. This system would be um, very viable for long-term use and very viable for um, without degradation. As your supercapacitors have a life of about 10,000 hours and your fuel cell can exceed 100,000 hours of operation. Um, a lot of you want to know. How many people in here at least one electric car or half of them? See, see quite a few, right? Your Toyota Mirai, which is what in California is being sold as a hydrogen fuel cell car, that's it right there. Pretty sleek looking car. Toyota might know how to design something sometimes. Um, cost you about 50 grand. However, the biggest issue right now is you cannot drive across country. There's not enough hydrogen generators across the country. Most of our hydrogen production is caught up in producing gasoline. It is a major part of the petroleum industry. As we reduce our reliance on gasoline, it will increase our reliance on hydrogen, making this a very efficient and reliable source of power. The Honda Clarity is another hydrogen vehicle. Costs you about 60 grand. You know, everyone's got 60 grand sitting around for a car. As I said before, the reason why these costs are so high is the platinum anodes and catalytes. Platinum isn't a very common material. Um, we are working on solutions for creating um, non-platinum based anodes and cathodes. The, the Washington National Laboratory is working on a uh, fusion of iron and platinum, which reduce the amount of platinum you need for this to work. According to the Department of Energy, if you want an 80 kilowatt automotive polymer electrolyzed cell, and you produce 100,000 of these a year, it costs you about $76 a kilowatt. Which, while affordable, is not ideal. But that does show, as we scale up our production of these technologies, and we begin to use them, and people show interest in them, we can use them and progress to an energy efficient future. And if you want to read my uh, journals and all that, more than welcome to. Any questions? So you said that the power, like your hydrogen, was like through electricity, right? You like yep. this electricity into water that was sent with the yeah. Yep. Um, you you create your hydrogen through electricity and then use that hydrogen to create electricity again. Yeah. Right. Uh, why was you used like that other than just take the electricity and just because hydrogen is a lot easier to store than electricity. The issue with electric cars right now is you have battery degradation. So every time you charge your car, you lose the amount of power that you can actually store. Mm -hmm. So this goes around that. You have a long service life of these cars, and 
hydrogen always has the same potential. You can take the water out of your car, remake it into hydrogen, and it will always be the same efficiency. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? If you were to get in a car crash, how much more dangerous would it be compared to a normal car? You sit on 16 gallons of gasoline during the school. Are you worried about that? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, like, if you're sitting on 16 gallons of gasoline during the school, or you can sit on a highly reactive lithium ion battery, I'd rather sit on a couple of pounds of, or a couple of kilograms of hydrogen or gasoline than a highly reactive battery, which we cannot put out efficiently. Yeah. Have you seen the um, Top Gear, or the, I guess it was our um, Grand, Grand Tour episode, where you crashed the car and they could not get that thing to go out? Because they require special surfactants to put out those yeah. It's a lot safer to put out a hydrogen fire than it is for a with the amount of. Okay. How did you manage to not blow yourself up? That's a good question. I ask that myself every day. I didn't listen to Ryan. That helps a lot. <laughs> I go, hey, Ryan, you know how to make blood polycytes, sir. Um, if I did this, what would happen? He goes, I don't know. I can tell you how to make a bomb, though. <laughs> so, you know, thanks for the help.